the video that I've chosen to make is about the short story that I wrote. Um, the reason I chose this uh, particular work is, well, for one, um, I've heard from multiple people that have read it that have said when they heard it or read it, uh, it made them want to cry. And you would think, well, that might be a bad thing. But no, if it does evoke an emotional response in somebody like that, uh, it must be a pretty good story. So that's what I'm going to read to you. Uh, the title was Memories to Last a Lifetime. The holidays are supposed to be a time of joyfulness, of merriment and frivolity, a time where we can reconnect with loved ones that we don't see very often, reliving old memories as well as making new ones. The year of my 17th birthday, however, the holidays did not meet up with those expectations. For many months, my great-grandpa Thomas had been in great pain, as a cancer slowly robbed him of his mobility and strength. His passing wasn't a question of if, but of when. Each year, we spent the holidays at our family cabin near Lake Erie in western New York State. This was the original family homestead, purchased by Great Grandma Edna's family during the railroad boom of the mid-1800s, and kept in the family over the years through a lot of hard work and ingenuity. The term cabin is a bit misleading. Originally, it was a cabin, just two rooms with a wood stove between them, and a two-seater outhouse next to the woods out back. Over the years, however, the original house had been expanded many times, adding a wing here, another roof line there, until in the end it encompassed seven bedrooms, several living rooms, or excuse me, parlors, two kitchens, and many other odd but interesting rooms tucked into every nook and cranny. It was now a large, rambling structure with no particular architectural style. It didn't need style. It was home. Born and raised in a small village of Ballyhanas, County Mayo, Ireland, in 1902, with the liltingly Irish brogue to prove it, and I have no way of actually reproducing that brogue, Grandpa Thomas, never Tom, had always been my favorite. He wasn't jolly, and was oftentimes thought to be too serious, though he had a wicked sense of humor. He didn't shower the grandchildren with presents and candies, but was always ready with a pat on the back, with the rare encouraging word. His gnarled arthritic fingers could fix anything, from the broken rope swing on the tire swing or a runner that had come off a sled to a tiny wheel that had come apart from a toy. Never one to give in to old age, it was Grandpa Thomas who was the first one out the door after a heavy snow, attaching a string of sleds to the farm tractor, ready to pull a line of delighted children down the country roads, whipping around the corners, but not so fast to tip over the sleds and going all out on the straightaways. After sledding came the traditional hot cocoa with peppermint sticks. We'd sit around the fire while Grandpa Thomas told us stories from the old country, along with jokes that most of us couldn't understand. We laughed anyway to make Grandpa happy. All of the grandchildren had been told of Grandpa Thomas's illness. Not in graphic medical terms, but only to let us know that he was sick and might not be with us much longer. That year, Thanksgiving was a quiet affair his grandpa was not able to stay awake very long. He barely made it through sitting at dinner, but was able to stand through sheer willpower to carve the turkey, a job he'd had before any of us were born. The week after Thanksgiving, Grandma called. Her voice was quiet yet still strong, and all she said was, I wanted you to know that Grandpa Thomas is no longer with us. For the first time ever, I didn't want to travel to New York for Christmas. I didn't want to see the forest, the snow-burdened trees, or the snow-covered sand of the beach. Who cared about bells on the farm horses when Grandpa Thomas wasn't there to hitch them to the sleigh? I wasn't given a choice, though. The orders came down from Grandma. Everyone will be there. No exceptions. We are a family, and we will continue to be a family regardless of what happens. Nobody dared to disobey her. The days leading up to Christmas were gloomy. Even nature seemed to mourn Grandpa's passing with no sun to speak of, and a frigid bite to the wind. Walking through the front door, I couldn't help but cry at the memories that bubbled to the surface. Every corner of the cabin contained memories of Grandpa. The hand-carved rocking chair that only he was allowed to sit in, the fireplace with his knickknacks, the shed full of junk that he would never throw away because, hey, I can make something out of that. The only bright spot in the entire place was Grandma's kitchen, still full of light, warmth, and noise, as if she were daring death to intrude on her domain. Grandma wasn't the only one to keep working to keep the depression at bay, as we all had our duties too. No matter what, the barn had to be cleaned, the horses fed and brushed, 
wood brought in for the massive stone fireplace that seemed to consume it faster than we could haul it. All of this helped us to make it to Christmas Eve, the traditional time of opening gifts. With the whole clan gathered in the sitting room, it was painfully evident that Grandpa Thomas wasn't going to be there. His rocking chair sat vacant and still. This was not going to be a fun holiday, not for any of us. I wanted to be out of there. Then came the best gift I had ever received. Grandpa Thomas, it turns out, was still with us, at least in a fashion. Grandma walked in carrying a wooden box. She marched straight to Grandpa's chair, turned and looked at us, and then with deliberate slowness planted herself firmly in the seat. Grandpa's seat, the seat of the leader of the family. This was a new grandma. Always in the past, she had deferred to Grandpa Thomas and his, this is how we have holidays because this is the way we have always had holidays. What would she do next, I wondered. I didn't have long to wait. Looking at us again, she sighed and said, Grandpa wanted you all to have what's in this box. She then opened it, and we saw it was full of cream-colored envelopes, each one addressed to one of us. Just as Grandpa Thomas had done each year in passing out gifts, she called us to her in order by age, handing us each a, bo a bulky envelope. I immediately saw that my name, Johnny, using my middle name as Grandpa had always done, some holdover from his Irish upbringing, was written in Grandpa's spidery writing, made shaky and uneven with his inability to hold a pen for long. As always, we quietly waited until she had emptied the box, and finally said, Go ahead. I didn't want to rip the envelope open. It wasn't wrapping paper, but something special. Something that had come directly from Grandpa Thomas's hands. Grandpa didn't write much, so the envelope was old, from a set of envelopes and stationery that Grandpa had purchased many years ago. The glue holding the envelope shut wasn't the greatest, and I was able to open the flap without damaging the paper. Inside, I found the reason for the thickness of the envelope. There were several sheets of folded paper, each containing Grandpa's shaky writing, but there was also an audio cassette. What could be on this? Did Grandpa record some music for me to listen to? I couldn't picture it. Grandpa almost never turned the radio on. So what would he know about music? Then Grandma cleared her throat and said, Gram Before Grandpa Thomas left us, he wanted to share his life with you one more time. Each of you has a letter that he wrote especially for you. But what are the tapes for? asked my cousin Julie. Grandpa wanted to be able to talk to each of you before he was gone, but couldn't get everybody here in time. So he made those tapes you could, so you could remember his voice, Grandma explained. They're for you to listen to whenever you can feel lonely or are missing him. You can go wherever you want in the house and read your letters now. We'll open the rest of the presents in the morning. I really wanted to stay and sit on the floor in front of the fire next to Grandpa's chair, but Grandma shooed us all out of the room saying, Go be by yourself to read. My favorite place in the house had always been down in the basement next to Grandpa's workbench. The lighting wasn't the greatest, but all of his tools were still there, carefully put away as he'd always done. I took my usual place sitting on the end of the workbench and unfolded the crackling paper. In Grandpa's writing it said, Johnny. I can only write a few words because we have a large family and there are a lot of letters to write. Please don't be sad, not for yourself, not for your family, and certainly not for me. I am happy, and I have found peace. I have lived for 88 years, longer than I ever thought. I know that at your age you might think that's forever, but life goes very quickly. You have a wonderful family. Don't cause them too much trouble. Trust in them. Go to them when you need help, and don't be afraid to ask for that help. Never forget where I came from, because you come from the same place. Do well in school. Study hard. It'll help you be happy and successful in the future. Be kind to the people you meet, even if you don't like them. They are just like you, with their own thoughts and fears and dreams. Always keep your promises, even if you don't want to. Even though you cannot see me, I will always be watching you. My heart will be with you, wherever I'm going. Grandpa Thomas Long after I had finished reading Grandpa's letter, I sat in that basement, my mind drifting from memory to memory. Even though he wasn't there with us, I realized that Grandpa Thomas would never be gone. Now this story isn't based in reality. There are a lot of liberties that I took with this story, um, but everything is based on individual people that I've had in my life. There really was, and still is, a homestead off by Lake Erie in New York. It's been in our family for years. It's owned by cousins that I've never met. There really was a Grandpa Thomas 
um, who did come from Ireland. I never met him. He died long before I was born. There was an uncle that I had, Uncle John, who did die, and he was great with fixing things. I've had multiple people in my family die of cancer and other illnesses, so they all played a part in this. Uh, my Uncle John is also the one who took us out uh, pulling the sleds behind a tractor at our hometown here in Wisconsin. And he did to always take us with him to uh, drink cocoa afterwards. These are all things that I remember from my childhood, and I wanted to memorialize people in my life by writing this story. I hope you all enjoyed it, and I had a lot of fun in this class, I'm not particularly with the poetry, um, but still, it was a lot of fun, and it helped to expand my, my own internal boundaries quite a bit. Thank you, and I hope you all have a great summer. Thank you.